Hello. In today's video, we shall learn in detail about muca which belongs to kingdom fungi. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding about the structure of muca, its various modes of reproduction and also its life cycle. Let us start with the introduction to muca. Muca is a saprophytic filamentous fungus belonging to kingdom fungi. Muca is commonly called pin mold or bread mold. It grows on dead and decaying organic matter and also on animal dung and therefore known as coprophilus. Muca causes a group of infections referred to as zygomycosis or mucormycosis that might affect the mucous membranes, lungs, eyes, skin, etc. Let us learn about the structure of muca. The plant body consists of a mass of white, delicate threads collectively known as the mycelium. It is highly branched cenocytic, that is, aseptate and multinucleate. Each individual thread of the mycelium is known as hypha. Its wall is made up of cellulose and chitin. The granular cytoplasm contains numerous vacuoles, small nuclei, reserve food glycogen and oil fats. The hyphae are of three types, submerged or rhizoidal hyphae, prostrate or stoloniferous hyphae and the vertical aerial hyphae or the sporangiophores. Next is reproduction in muca. Muca shows three modes of reproduction, namely vegetative reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation. Due to accidental breakage, mycelium breaks into small fragments. Each fragment of the fungus develops into new mycelium. Asexual reproduction takes place by sporangiospores, chlamydospores and oidiospores. Sexual reproduction takes place by the method of conjugation. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this video, please like and share the video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Now, we shall look into asexual reproduction by sporangiospores. This method of reproduction takes place under favorable conditions of moisture and temperature. Numerous slender erect hyphae called sporangiophores develop each ending in a spherical or knob-like structure called sporangium. The protoplasmic contents migrate to the spherical head and become differentiated into a central vacuolated region called columellar and an outer denser region containing a number of nuclei known as poroplasm. Soon, a dome-shaped cleft appears and separates the outer denser protoplasm from the central vacuolated region. The central vacuolated region is sterile and is called the columella. The protoplasm of the outer fertile denser region 
forms a number of small multinucleate masses. Each mass is a spore and its wall gets thickened. Due to the accumulation of a fluid in the columella, it swells and exerts pressure on the thin wall of the sporangium. The wall bursts and the spores are liberated. Under favorable conditions, they germinate and grow directly into the muca plant. Next is asexual reproduction by chlamydospores. During unfavorable conditions, the spores inside the vegetative cell develops a hard wall around itself. These thick wall spores are known as resting spores. The mature hypha becomes septate and accumulate nuclei and cytoplasm. A thick wall is formed around it and change into the chlamydospore. With the return of favorable condition, the chlamydospore germinates and gives rise to new mycelium. Next is asexual reproduction by oidiospores. When kept in nutritive medium, the cenocytic hyphae form small, thin wall structures that detaches out of the vegetative cell. The spore so formed is the oidiospore. After detachment, it increases by budding. The stage is called torula stage. It remains dormant for some time and on return of favorable condition, it forms a germination tube which forms the new mycelium. Now, we shall study about sexual reproduction in muca. Sexual reproduction takes place when hyphae from different mycelia of opposite strains come in contact with one another. The two strains are morphologically similar but physiologically dissimilar and hence regarded as heterothalic. When the plus strain and the minor strain come in contact with one another, a swelling or protuberance occur at the point of contact. The swelling enlarges to form progametangium. The distal ends of the two progametangia get inflated with cytoplasm, nuclei and food and get divided by a partition wall into a basal suspensor and a terminal gametangium. The protoplasmic contents of each gametangium constitute the gamete. The end walls of the two gametangia get dissolved and the protoplasm of two gametes intermingles forming a single fusion cell called the zygote. The zygote with a thick wall of several layers is called zygospore. It has an outer thick spiny exospore and a thin delicate endospore which contains abundance of food, particularly fat globules to tide over the unfavorable period. Next is germination of zygospore. The zygospore germinates during favorable conditions. The outer wall or exosporium breaks and the inner wall grows out into a tube called the promycelium or sporangiophore with a spherical sporangium at its tip. The sporangium contains numerous small spores. The spores germinate and give rise to new individuals. Sometimes the gametes fail to fuse and develop parthenogenetically to form thick wall spores called 
azygospores or parthenospores. Let us now look into the life cycle of muca. The diagram of life cycle of muca shows both asexual and sexual mode of reproduction. Asexual reproduction shows the formation of spores in the sporangium and also the germination of spores into new mycelium. Sexual reproduction takes place between two opposite strains of mycelium. The life cycle diagram clearly shows the formation of gametes, conjugation between the gametes, finally resulting in the formation of zygospore. Germination of zygospore gives rise to sporangium and again spores are formed. This cycle continues as shown in the diagram. So today we have learned in detail about the structure of mucor, its mode of reproduction and also its life cycle. I have some practice questions for you. Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video and write down the questions if you like. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comments section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.